Welcome back to Honda Football. Today's detailed performance review is on these cleats that I picked up from my partners over at eastbay.com. You guys saw this unboxing, I know you guys have, and you guys have been hitting me up on Instagram, on YouTube, by email, on where you can find these cleats. When I did the unboxing video, East Bay was all sold out. Right now, I think they're still all sold out, but I'm gonna include that link in the video of this description. In a couple weeks, or in a couple of days, they should have a restock of these. So while you're waiting for those, you definitely enjoy this review. Now in the unboxing, I gave you guys an overview of the cleat, and I'm still gonna do that uh, for those who haven't seen or need a little reminder. And then I mentioned that I'm going to, that I'm going to be comparing it to these Jordan Retro 11s, uh, the Windlike 96 version, um, compared to the actual basketball shoe, which these are modeled after. That would probably be more appropriate for the mids, but I just got these in as well. The new iridescent, the emerald, the low. So I'm actually gonna compare it more to the lows because this is the one that I actually used and tested out. They're kind of the same, the mids and the lows, but I played a full game in these. So I wanna give you guys the comparison differences between the basketball shoe, the Retro 11s, and then the Retro 11 inspired football cleat. Uh, so without further ado, let's get into that review. I'm gonna start by giving you guys differences between the lows and the mids. Uh, essentially, they're the same. They both come in the same different colorways. Uh, they come in the Concord colorway, they come in the red and white, a blue and white, and all black, and then they come in the cool gray. So you can get them in both the mid and the low, and again, those are in the link in the description. Now let's take a look at the mids. Just like the actual Jordan 11 basketball shoe, these have a ballistic nylon uh, in the upper. You can see that it's the same material that's really form-fitting. So I, I love the ballistic nylon because it's gonna give you a form-fitting, kind of a mesh uh, in the upper that's gonna be really adaptable to your, to your foot, at least that's the intention. They still have the patent leather at the bottom, just like, again, the Retro 11s. And you can see the cut in the patent leather is the same as well. Now it looks a little bit different on camera and the reason is when you look at this base uh, of Lunar Lawn, it's actually comes straight across versus if you look at the actual basketball shoe, you can see that it follows the silhouette of the patent leather. So that's one of the big differences in the cleat and that's what makes this cleat look a little funny when you look at it and possibly what makes the cleat look a little heavier. Usually when you have this straight line cut across a shoe, that's gonna be more in like a boot style. Usually casual shoes uh, or running shoes or basketball shoes, they're gonna have some type of cut or design in the actual midsole and the outsole of the cleat. Uh, so this kind of makes it look heavy, looks like um, a boot. So we're actually gonna weigh this and I'll show you guys exactly how heavy it is and compare it to a basketball shoe as well as talk about um, how it compares to the vapors in the weight. I'm gonna bring back out the low version of these uh, because this is where they have the similarities. I talked about the differences, um, really the height obviously, uh, but now the similarities between these are both gonna be in the lunar line cushioning. So the Jordan 11s, thank you for all my followers who definitely corrected me in my unboxing video. I said that there was a decoupled zoom air. There's actually one full length air unit. It's not zoomed, just a full length air unit in the retro Jordan 11s. Uh, these do not have air, these have lunar line. Um, and that's the biggest difference in the cushioning system. A lot of the Jordan cleats that I have seen from this year, whether they're uh, you know, for colleges, for like Michigan, for example, they have Jordan 13 uh, PEs. Uh, some of the nines that are out uh, for baseball, um, they all use Lunar Line. The ones that were in the past, I think they also had the nines in the past, or sorry, they had the sevens. They also use Lunar Line. Um, all the football cleats also use the Jordan cleats, use this cleat pattern at the bottom, which is different than what you're gonna see something in the Nike Vapor line or the Nike Speed line or even the Nike Alpha line. Now Nike has used this. I think some of you guys commented on what cleat uh, Nike did use this plate on. So I can't remember, but if you have that, definitely comment in the description below. Um, I'll try to bump it to the top. So it's a kind of an older plate that Nike uses, um, but you know, I think in this cleat it works. I'm gonna get into that when I go over the, the three different sections of what you'll like, um, what you'll love, and then some of the trade-offs. Um, but those are the differences between the actual football cleat, the Jordan Retro 11 inspired football cleat, and the, the actual basketball shoe. Uh, other than that, you know, the Jumpmans are the same in the retros as they are in the uh, basketball version, both the low, it has the Jumpman at the back, and on the mid, it has the Jumpman at the side. Uh, it's also got the 23 in the same places as well. And I'll show you guys just so you can see uh, that comparison, right? Jumpman's in the same spot. Looking at the basketball shoe 
and the, the football cleat jump ends in the same spot as well. The last subtle difference in these two is actually on the toe. You can see that there's less space between the patent leather and the actual lacing as there is on the football cleat. Um, that has quite a bit of spacing more. Um, I haven't understood why. I've tried to look at the other differences. There's also more room in the toe box uh, on the football cleat than there is in the basketball shoe. And that's true for both the mid and for the low version. So now we're gonna get into a little bit more detail about these cleats. I'm gonna go over what you're really gonna love about this, what you're gonna like, and then some of the trade-offs that you'll have if you decide to purchase this cleat. The first thing that you're gonna love, it's obvious, if you're a Jordan fan, if you're a Jordan 11 fan, if you're from Chicago, all of you guys, you're really gonna like that you have a Jordan 11 cleat um, that you've been asking for for years. So they've had PEs in the league, in the NFL. Um, I don't think they've sold these at retail. And so for a lot of Jordan fans out there, I mean, you guys were the ones filling all my comments with where you can get these. Um, you're gonna like this. No longer do you have to buy an actual Jordan shoe and then have it customized with a generic plate at the bottom to make it into a football cleat with. A lot of you guys, you know, you're paying over $200 for your J11s and then you don't wanna cut it up and make it a football cleat. Um, a lot of us don't have that much cash to burn to be able to do that. So this comes in at $125, so you're really gonna love um, that this is available. And not only is it available in a cleat, the classic Concord colorway, you're going to love that you can get it in five different colorways and you can get it in the low and the mid. That's something that you usually don't see when a brand releases something that's exclusive or something that people wanted as much as these. Um, between the two, the low and the mid, there's 10 different options that you can have. And so that's something that you're really gonna love about this. Now I decided to put this last part also in the love category, um, more because a lot of you guys always ask about uh, cleat sizes and foot widths and you know Nike might be too narrow for you, you have to go up a size. And this is one cleat that I think is really adaptable to your foot width. Um, it's a little wider than I would like. I have narrow feet. I love the tightness of something like the Vapors or everything in the Vapor line. Um, when you have more of the Alpha line, it becomes a little bit wider, it feels like. Um, but this one, I had to wear two socks, which I usually do anyway, but wear two socks to actually make it feel tight. And so what that means is that if you guys have a little bit of a wider foot um, or a different foot shape, and you're, the vapors aren't as comfortable for you, they're a little too tight, you're really gonna like this width. And I think that's true for any of Nike's line that use these plates. If I'm not mistaken, it was something maybe in the super bad line that used this plate bottom as well, which is fits a little bit wider than the, the traditional speed cleat. Um, so the last thing that you're really gonna like about this that goes along with the width size is the variety of positions. This is really an all around cleat. Um, that goes into the cushioning, how it's super comfortable uh, because of the lunar line in here, um, but you can use it at a variety of positions. It's gonna give you that support. Lunar line is dual density foam, so it's soft, it's resilient, but it's also gonna be very supportive for you. And then the traction at the bottom can be used, like I said, at a variety of positions. So those are all the things that you're really going to love about this Jordan 11 cleat. Now let's talk about what you're really going to like about this cleat. Uh, the first thing is the relatively low weight. Now, again, in the beginning of the video, I said that you guys said this looked very heavy, and I think it's really because of the bottom contour of the cleat. When you look at the lows of the actual basketball shoe, they don't look as heavy because of the design of the midsole and how that is uh, aligned with the patent uh, leather in the upper. Now, when I weighed the actual football cleat, now this came in at just over 14 ounces, and that's a little bit heavier, about one ounce heavier than the actual Vapor Untouchables, which are a very light cleat. These, the basketball version of the same size shoe, actually weigh in at almost 17 ounces. So they're gonna be about three ounces heavier uh, than the actual football cleat. So if you think these are light and these feel good and supportive, these are gonna be even a little bit lighter on your feet and they're gonna have good cushioning as well. Not air, but they do have the Lunar Line. With that being said, these weighed in at under 16 ounces, just a hair under 16 ounces, so still lighter than the low basketball cleats. And the mid version of these in the basketball version weighed in at close to 20 ounces. So the basketball shoes are actually heavier than the actual football version of the cleat. Now I have to admit, when I unboxed these cleats, uh, they did look a little different than the basketball shoe. And I was kind of wondering, sitting there like, how are these gonna look on foot? Um, I was like, are they cool or are they kind of tacky? But when you put them on foot, they actually look a lot better. I'd say they look a thousand times better on foot than they do off foot. So if you like the way that they look here, definitely check out how they look on foot and see that 
I'm betting that you're probably gonna like it a lot more. So that's something that you're gonna like about this, just how it looks when you actually wear the cleat in a game. Lastly, what you're gonna like is the price point. Uh, these are priced at $125 for the mid and $120 uh, for the low. Again, that link is in the description of the video. Um, again, keep checking back because East Bay is gonna restock. Uh, but that's a pretty affordable cleat. When you think about Jordan basketball shoes, I think for the win like 96, I paid $220. So that's $220 for those mids, $125 for these. And then on the lows, these are $120. And I think for my emerald lows that just came out, I paid $175 uh, for those. Um, so you can see that the actual basketball shoe costs a lot more. Um, they do have different technology like in the air, um, but you would think that they would be around the same price. So that's kind of funny, um, but when you think about the Nike uh, cleats and the football cleats, kind of where that price point sits, uh, something like the Vapor Elites are gonna have more technology. They're around the $200 mark. These are about the same as the Vapor Untouchable pros, uh, but don't even have the same technology that those do. So from a performance standpoint, um, those Vapor and Touchable Pros are going to be a better performing or performance cleat than these are. But what you get here is you get the versatility um, across player uh, positions, and then you get the versatility and fitment, and then of course you get the Retro Jordan 11 look. Now, when we talk about the trade-offs of the cleat, those are some of the things that you're going to have to trade off. You're not gonna have air, um, like the actual basketball shoe, and it's not gonna have a vapor plate. Um, if you saw the cleats that like Jalen Ramsey wears, that Joe Hayden wears, where they actually have the retro 11 cleats, and we saw it in the playoffs this year, but they actually use the vapor plate at the bottom. Um, it's very different than what you're gonna see here. So that's some of the trade-off um, that you get at that price point, is that you're not gonna have uh, some of those things that they have in the NFL. All of these color versions, all the colorways have a white midsole, um, except I think for the all black version. And I would suggest getting the all black if you like that colorway. I use these for one game on turf, um, a dry day, wasn't snowing. It's like still spring, winter here uh, in Chicago. Um, but you can see that this already started to get scuffed. And this is after one flag football game um, in on turf. So that white lunar line, that material is really gonna pick up dirt very easily. Some of the nylon, some of the lacing also started to pick up some of the dirt. Again, it's a white cleat, so that's expected. But wanted you guys to know, um, I did use something like a magic eraser that you can use for walls and different things to actually get it back to white. So this looks the same, and you see how I got this uh, cleat a little more back to white versus something like this. Um, which nothing worked except for the magic eraser. So that's just something, a little tip for you guys. If you're in this colorway, know that they are gonna get dirty quick. So you might wanna use them for special occasions, might wanna be that extra cleat that you have in your cleat bag. Now I usually don't do this in my performance review videos, but I did want to talk about uh, just what I would have liked to see in a cleat. Obviously being from Chicago, I am a huge, huge, huge Jordan fan. As you can see, I have a couple of Jordans that I'd like to hoop in. There are some things that I would have loved to see in this cleat. I was so excited for this to come out. And the first is, I would have liked to see full length air. I think I talked about that in the unboxing. Um, that's something that I'm a big fan of Nike Air, whether it's um, Air Max, uh, full length air, or Zoom Air, love it in all the basketball shoes and running shoes. Um, but I would have liked to see that in a football cleat, something that the original Vapor Carbons had. They had uh, a Zoom unit in the heel. So would have liked to see that make it to the Jordan cleats, kind of bring that back. I would have also liked to see the Vapor plate. Um, you guys already know that I love the traction in the new Vapor line that came out a couple years ago. They're using that same plate in the new Vapor line this year. Would have loved to see that. It's kind of the ultimate traction for me. Um, I also like a little more narrow, but that's just my, my personal preference. And then the last thing that I would have liked to see is to make this outsole a lot more like the actual basketball shoe. I'm gonna show you guys this one more time, uh, but you can see here, you can see the outline. Um, would have liked it to look a lot like that. So I'll put them side by side so you guys can see the differences in how they look. Um, and it really makes it look a little funny because the lunar line doesn't follow that same silhouette um, as the patent leather. Other than that, it's, it's really the same, um, but I would have liked to see that in this cleat. So there you have it, that's my detailed review. If you like this video, remember to give me a thumbs up, share with your friends, subscribe, definitely check out my other reviews and my other unboxings, and I will see you guys next time.